because I haven't fully told them the whole story. Um, and so I think it's unfair for them. I have to be in the right place. I've, I've gone to therapy to talk about it, but you know, it's topics involving suicide, addiction, Hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen and my new series, Fed Up. Every episode, I'm gonna be sitting down with a fellow influencer or content creator to ask some of the tough questions and have real, uncensored, unscripted discussions without the shame and judgment. Because we're all a little fed up, right? It's Ryan time! Today, I'll be talking to one of YouTube's most popular fitness and lifestyle creators, Kelty O'Connor. But first, let me tell you about my sponsor, Scentbird. So considering that I've spent the last, I don't know, four years with fresh babies and living in a pandemic, I can count on one hand the number of date nights that I've had since becoming a mom. But as I discussed in my glow up video, now that my kids are getting a little bit older and also things are starting to open back up again, I'm trying to make more of an effort. Sometimes it's the little things like blow drying my hair or putting on makeup that just makes me feel more energized, as silly as that sounds. But I recently found out about Scentbird, which is a fragrance subscription service that gives you the opportunity to shop from over 600 brands to try every month for just $16. Their vials are eight times bigger than a typical perfume sample, and you get a 30-day supply of everything, so you can give it a go before you commit to a full bottle. And if you want, you can upgrade to receive two or three products per month if you want to switch things up. But you basically fill out their quiz to discover scents that you'll like, or you can choose from their top designer brands list. So based on my quiz results, I got Badgley Mishka, which smells like pear, magnolia, and jasmine, so good. Another one I got was Sicily Paris, which smells like peonies, which are my all-time favorite flower. And then I've also got Good Habits Align, which has the scent of black currants and white amber. So I am definitely looking forward to putting these to good use tonight on our date night out. So if you want to give Scentbird a try, you can use my code ABBYSHARP to get 30% off of your first month using the link in my bio. So that's just $11 for your first month. And my Canadian followers will be so happy to note that they also now ship up here as well. So yay for smelling delicious. Now, before we dive in, I wanna remind you to check out my disclaimer, including a trigger warning to those with past or previous experiences with disordered eating. I also wanna remind everyone to, of course, subscribe to this channel and ring that bell so that you never miss out on an episode. Well, thank you so much, Kelty, for joining me. Thank you for having me, I'm so excited. Like, I'm glad we can actually have like a full conversation. We've only kind of talked briefly, so I'm excited. For sure. Um, for those who haven't watched your content yet, can you tell us a little bit, like, how would you describe your videos and style? So my videos, I guess, like, the core of, like, my purpose in making it would be the best way is, like, I'm just uh, one to get the most out of life and just kind of challenge my body, improve myself that I'm capable of more than I think, and just get the most out of a life. So go on adventures, travel the world, and so hopefully I make really a entertaining uh, content around that and maybe inspires people to achieve a goal they've always wanted to. But yeah, at the end of the day, it's just doing those things I've always wanted to do and making content around it. I love that. So you went from being a college basketball player to transitioning to a full-time YouTuber. And I watched your 100 day body transformation journey video. Um, and in it, you mentioned that you suffered from some severe identity crisis after ending your sports career. And you also hinted that you overcame some of like really dark thoughts there. Um, do you want to talk about that or where you are right now with sharing this story? Yeah, for sure. This is, we're gonna hit deep right away with this. So, you know, I just wanna warn anyone, some of, the, even the verbiage, I'm even just becoming comfortable saying, and it's, to sum it up, it'd be considered post-career syndrome. And it's something I stopped playing basketball due to injury. So it was something like I didn't even mentally prepare for. Cause usually, you know, the end of your career with basketball in college, you're like, oh, four years. But when my ended, 
unexpectedly, um, yeah, post-career syndrome just means I spent my whole life being like, describe yourself. I'd be like a tall, blonde athlete. And like I do school too. And suddenly everything flipped. I was planning to go to med school. I was, you know, planning to finish out my degree as a varsity athlete. And then it was all stripped away from me. And I just distinctly remember one day being in the bar and a guy came up to me. I just had surgery and he's like, what do you do? And I just stared at this guy blankly. And I was like, oh my God, I, and like the poor guy was probably like, what is this? What's this going on in this girl's head? But, and it was a very, very dark time. And it's, you know, it's verbiage that can get you demonetized. So I'm even trying to be careful with saying it. And that's why I've never done a My Fitness Journey video um, yet because even though I want to have it and I've kind of hinted at some of the things that, uh, sorry if I get teary eyed in this, um, it's more like respect to my family and my boyfriend and my best friends because I haven't fully told them the whole story. Um, and so I think it's unfair for them I have to be in the right place. I've, I've gone to therapy to talk about it, but you know, it's topics involving suicide, addiction, um, other words I can't even say with it, you getting demonetized. And so it was just, um, I lost everything I knew who I was and I'm a very energetic, high, uh, you know, just a very yeah, energetic individual and suddenly, and very goal oriented. I know goals, all this energy, and I went down a very slippery slope for many of years. And I think it's something that's just not talked about a lot. And that's why I do want to make the video um, because I've seen it, I've seen friends, I've seen family members who are all former athletes. And I don't wanna just generalize athletes. I think it can be high academic people that get out of the college or just people that musicians have a definition and they lose that for whatever reason. And I, I do plan on making that video and I think I've kind of hinted at some parts of it and it's in the works, but I want to do it respectfully for like who I, the, the people I'm closest to, but then also it is a really important message. And just like mental health, the more we start talking to them, the more I wish I was aware of it. Because like you said, when that person asked me, I didn't know it was an identity crisis. It took me five or six years to realize, oh, you went down that really dark path because you had no purpose, no identity. and you just latched onto anything you could possibly get. Well, thank you for sharing that. That's um, that's so brave of you, and I and I also hope that you can make that video at some point because I agree. You know, a lot of these topics are not talked about enough, and there's so such a need to reduce that stigma by you know sharing this with our community, and we have such a, a, a big platform. Um, so yeah, I hope that you find a, a time and place where that's something that you're comfortable with. I know I certainly suffered from a similar situation myself um, ending my kind of academic career I was on path to do a PhD um, I had a full scholarship I was you know top of the class um, I had a pretty much perfect GPA everyone was kind of rooting for me to to win all these awards and 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 do all these amazing academic accolades and and I dropped out of graduate school and I had a complete identity crisis because I felt like that was all that I was. I was just the smart one. I was the one who, you know, put my hand up and knew the answer to every question. And I didn't even know who I was after that. And uh, and it felt like I was literally jumping into the abyss when I dropped out. Um, but I'm obviously so glad that I did look where I am now. And that was such an important step for me to take and, and clearly you as well like you've you've made such an amazing exciting career for yourself so I'm, I'm really glad that that it's worked out for you yeah and I think it just resonates and just us even opening up about this and I hope anyone listening when I think you've mentioned this and I've even seen you have TikToks about it and like I mentioned it is just knowing like when you get to that dark place and lose your identity you still have all those foundations that just means you're really smart you can you know there's so many more things you can learn and then there's such greater things to look forward to and that would be even just my little self is that's the journey I'm on that's why I'm like milk life for all of its worth absolutely and I mean so you've made that shift now to being you know an athlete sharing your life so publicly on YouTube what was your rationale for wanting to go into the YouTube space oh, this is a complicated one a little bit um, it's not very smooth uh, light switch but for me you know we hinted back before I thought I wanted to do med school uh, looking back, the only reason I wanted to do med school is because I loved the show Grey's Anatomy and I had good grades. And so it was like rational, like, okay, let's go be a doctor. Um, spent a little time in a hospital and was like, oh, uh, 
respect to all doctors and all that, I was like, oh, you are not meant to be a doctor. And then suddenly as I got older, I realized, I was like, no, 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 you like the idea of being on Grey's Anatomy, not being a doctor. And then um, that was a realization of, I think, Basketball was a great, even though you're not a performer, you are an entertainer. You're there, you're performing in front of crowds, and that was, and I just grew up watching YouTube, Jenna Marbles, uh, Casey and I sat, like his Nike commercial, it, like inspired me in ways I could not even begin to uh, describe, and so I think I was just trying to figure it out. I, uh, I was just trying lots of things, and at the time, YouTube, I kind of had a bit of an Instagram following, and so I just played around with YouTube, and I tried a hundred different things, and it was just genuinely, I love, making entertaining content um, for people and that's just what I think I've always done like when I was growing up in high school I always asked not to do essays if I could do movie presentations um, and I loved computer sciences and back then that was there was absolutely no monetization on YouTube so I didn't even think and then I just kind of started dabbling into it and I was like wow I really like it so even though I fall into like the fitness niche because I just have that sports background and like my mom was a personal trainer um, it was never really versus like I think you come and that's why I'm not trying not to step over people like your feet that like you come with a nutrition background so you're spewing education and that's what I was like even though I'm in the fitness community and I might be going off on a tangent I was like it at the end of the day is I just want to make you know 10 minute video that someone just like brightens their day and maybe inspires them to like do something yeah your your content totally brightens my day I love <clears throat> I love the editing I think it's funny obviously I think you're funny and witty and I think it's educational and entertaining entertaining so I love watching your channel and it's really funny that you mentioned the thing about Grey's Anatomy being like you know you want to like be like pretend kind of like on TV as you were a doctor because I kind of came into this industry in a similar way I have a background in acting and performance as a child um, and I did a lot of theater and a lot of you know TV as a kid and so I'm a dietitian, that's like, that's my knowledge base and that's kind of um, my profession, but ultimately like I could never work in a kind of clinical setting as a dietitian. I, I did it, I, I was unhappy, I knew that it was not for me. I knew that it was not for me at, even before I even went into becoming a dietitian. I knew that I needed an unconventional path because I just couldn't sit in front of someone and you know analyze their diet and, and go through that. Now again, like you said, respect to all my clinical RDs out there. It is hard work, um, but ultimately you have to find your kind of niche and, and exactly what fires your, your soul. So I'm, I'm glad that you found something that works for you. I didn't want to interrupt. I was like, that also makes sense why you're so good on camera is like having that background because like obviously you have all the science behind it. But I was like, but then where do you also have this charisma? And I was like, ah, oh, it's like the perfect just like crossroads of like exactly where you have to be. Exactly. And I'm so obviously I'm so grateful that I've had that opportunity to make that that place for myself. So that's been a real blessing in my life. But it doesn't come without challenges and I mean I find that industry that this industry is really tough on my mental health and I find like burnout is really real and trolls are vicious. Do you ever worry that this job is too much for your mental health and I'm wondering how you cope with some of the non-stop you know public scrutiny and critique? I think I might have a not to be like oh I'm so different but I might have like a bit of a different perspective of I feel really blessed that I started to get some traction in my later 20s after I overcame a lot of my mental health issues. Like I look, I know you interviewed Linda Sun and like I feel, not like feel for her and like oh she, she's a strong independent woman but I was like she's growing up being vulnerable in the public eye. At least like even though I'm always vulnerable, I was like if 20 year old Kelty was on the internet, I'm like 10 emojo vibes. Like I'm getting cancelled like right and I had to overcome a lot of things and I think that kind of just taught me even just being aware of like just different mental health diagnosis and what reacts well. Now it doesn't mean mental health is just like physical health. It's not like you know I come from having like a lot of issues like OCD and ADHD and a lot of others we could dive into but I think just knowing that and having the framework and it's going to be ebbs and flows and realizing it and I think that was really thankful in that sense but in modern day I still burn out and that's just a reality and I think it's now not 
when I had my first big burnout, I felt like a complete failure. And I was like, oh my gosh, like how you you can't do it. And then suddenly I just realized that like, even yesterday I had a conversation with um, my boyfriend and he was like, Are you doing okay? You're off. I'm like, I'm like a week away from burnout. I need to change some things up. And it's just more of like realizing that's just, especially when you're constantly putting yourself on, it's kind of this hamster wheel. You, every time I just get a bit better at recognizing the symptoms of it and how to cope with it. So I think it's, it's a learning process, just like fitness and food. Like you don't, you're not magically gifted with perfect mental health. Maybe there, there is some people I'm sure, but even people with perfect mental health, you know, COVID did a lot of crazy things for us. And so I feel lucky in that sense. And I have a lot of boundaries, uh, as simple as like, I have two phones, uh, because I have my phone with social media and then I have my phone with my best friends. And so after a certain time, the other one gets in the drawer and you just can't get a hold of me. And I think, you know, I, I feel very blessed that I can afford to, but I think it's just like that's, even though it, it's quite a cost, it's like that's my mental health right there. Like that's changed it. And so I think really having boundaries. And then in terms of the trolls, uh, I feel very lucky that I just have tried to create a community that's very positive and I feel I have an unbelievably positive community and of course it's the internet I could say one thing wrong and people tear me apart but for the most part I love criticism I come from a sports background I almost and I'm gonna knock on every word because I could eat this almost sometimes wish I had a little bit more um, because it's so positive I'm like okay hey, tell me like tell me my mic isn't loud enough or that you didn't like this thing like I, I'm trying to create the most entertaining content for my audience so sometimes they're so nice I'm like hey what, what do you want like what can I change up to make it more entertaining and then the trolls who just pick apart those I've just kind of gotten to that point that I'm like if you are spending the time to just pick apart someone I know you're hurting there's something I don't know what the dynamics is but I genuinely feel bad for any trolls and so I also don't dip into the drama and I stay away and I could be a lot more clickbaity into drama and going after things, but it's not worth my mental health to go after that. I'd rather have a smaller subscriber base. It's super positive. We are all supporting each other than have 10 million subscribers because I had to dive into drama and sacrifice my own mental health. So that's kind of how I've handled it. These are fantastic tips, taking note. The two phone thing, everyone was like watching, they, they must have seen my eyes just like, whoa, why did I never think of that? That's f***ing genius. Um, I'm doing that, like that's a fantastic investment. Think of how much money I could spend, uh, save on therapy by just buying another phone. Like that, that, transaction, that transaction works out in my opinion. So, so worth thank it. you. Okay, so in your July video on my 100 day body transformation journey, um, you also shared this comment from a viewer that basically called your challenges like clickbaitish and pointless. And you said that this was hard for you because you know your inner struggles were now obvious to the outside world. So I'm first of all curious, what inner struggles do you think that your viewers were picking up on exactly? So for me, and I don't want to sound like I feel very privileged during COVID that I was still able to work and that YouTube, if anything, picked up. So I just want to start off and be like, I, I realize that, but where the mental health struggle was is also not being open. Like I felt so lucky that sometimes I didn't dig deep. And if you go back to like February, 2020, it's quite comical now, but I was completely rebranding my channel because I was never really doing, I was more just chasing like, hey, this is what people want that. And I finally was like, this is the content I wanna make. And I travel a lot. It was, my idea was, you know, travel around the world, trying different fitness and foods from around the world. And I had like this, just all these different series. And then suddenly COVID happened and I was like, every single series that I planned is not possible anymore. And I was like, oh gosh. But you know, it was tunnel vision. I was like, the world didn't. So I was like at home workouts, you know, after I did every at-home workout, I was like, hey, try celebrity things. Just, you know, I almost was just like, just making content to make it. And I felt very lucky and I'm not hating myself for making those videos. Like none were, you know, toxic or anything, but it was just kind of, I was like, oh, I could pump out these, like nothing, but it wasn't like why I started YouTube. There's no real, oh my God. I'm like, I'd publish that video and never watch it again. Versus like, when I do a good video, I want to share it to everyone I know. It's like, it's, um, and I just kind of, and so I knew the content, like I'd see all my titles and I'd be like, ugh, this isn't what I want to be doing. And like, which sounds kind of awful. Like it was nothing too bad. It was just not what, like I said, lit my soul on fire. It was just like an average. So it just felt very nine to five job. And so I was just appealing to what people I thought want, not even just like 
you know, but truly understanding my audience. And then I think that really hit because it was just very like basic challenges. I wasn't able to do, you know, I had that big gymnastics video and I was like, I canceled that gymnastics video every three weeks for like months on end and be like, discipline this, cancel this. So it was just like, and then I had no time. So it was like make up, what can I do in a week? And so, yeah, they were just week long challenges. You're not going to see results. And I tried to show that. And that was kind of just the theme I had that like only a week can only change so much. And I always tried to get a message with it, but it was hard seeing like, oh no, people also think the same. And then I was like, my channel's dying and my purpose. And, and that's where I'd like, it was really nice to I finally travel and go to Sweden and just like step away and be away from the distractions and then just really dig down deep and like what why did you start YouTube what content do you want to make and like what makes you uniquely you and I think that's why that hundred day journey was even though it was my body transformation it was so much more um, it was just more of like finding myself as an athlete and that and so I think that's where it was it was just a realization of like and I'm not trying to feel bad because it was just a reality. I couldn't make the content I wanted and I did the best that I could. And I think a lot of us are probably feeling that like we had to put a lot of dreams and hopes on the back burner and like to not feel guilty. It was not us. It was just, we did the best we could in the time we had because you can't really train as a gymnast in your like 400 square foot apartment. <laughs> 100% I'm sure everyone listening has thoughts about that like no matter what their profession is or what their their life situation is like none of us have been able to do everything we wanted to do in the COVID life and we've all had to just kind of like make do with the best we have like even just trying to balance parenthood and work there are so many days that I feel like I'm failing at everything I'm failing at being a mom and I'm failing at my job and um, you know just cutting myself that slack to be like you know what this is just gonna be good enough and I've just had to really kind of come to terms with that and it has also been a process and humbling process at that but I think that a lot of people are feeling that so um, yeah I'm th thank you for sharing that um, and I'm also curious like I love that you are kind of finding the content that speaks to you and that you get excited about as a content creator because I feel like as creators so often we get stuck in the the, the game of just like creating content that is like clickbaity and like super entertaining, like based on what gets a lot of views. Um, and I'm just curious like now, like how are you balancing um, creating content that of course like performs well, but also like speaks to you and your soul? So the one that I've done, and I think this is the best way and I'm not gonna um, hit it perfectly, but I started my fitness uh, bucket list and it was honestly just like a whim of a thought and like, people really resonate with it, especially. Um, and so I just started talking to my audience and be like, what would you guys like to see? And not being like, oh, they like this one the most, I have to do it. It was just more, I'm like, honestly, I have always wanted to do that. Let's add it to the list. And I'm taking a bit more of that approach, not being like, this is most popular, this is the best, I have to do that one. Occasionally, I won't lie, it just like sounds like a real big challenge and maybe it's not the most. I'm like, let's just see this video. So there, or I, I have such, love for making entertaining videos. So I'm like, hey, if I can make this super entertaining, I, I thrive in that. So uh, I'm not gonna perfectly follow it, but I, I think just that's the best thing is just not doing it though, just solely, because I know it'll perform well. Like for example, keto, you know, I, I'm not a keto person. I in the past would do it just simply because I knew it would get views. And now I'm like, mm, no, I, I know my body doesn't respond well to that. But versus, you know, what was, a lot of people had um, like rock climbing as one of those. I was like, yeah, I have always, it just never even crossed my mind. So I write it down and I think that's gonna be kind of more of my approach is sacrificing some of the things that I know are just SEO optimized and popular, just, and then not being so scared of those things that aren't SEO optimized. Like I had a couple that, you know, there's no reason it will go big or anything, but I was like, this just speaks to my soul so much. And I, I hopefully that resonates with people. And then at the end of the day, I think that's the best you can do as a content creator is like truly speak from your soul and like your individual, and that's what makes you individual. So I think that's, I won't do it perfectly, but I think the bucket list ironically, yeah, just was a whim. And I was like, oh, this was everything I wanted to do, even though it sounds so simple. So let's talk about your challenges again for a second. So. As someone who creates a lot of content around training and eating like different celebrities and public figures, do you find it challenging on your body and your mental health to just keep making all these drastic changes to your lifestyle in order to make these videos? Uh, see, I get that 
question quite often and I think a year or like when I first started blowing up like after the Tom Brady video definitely and that's why like I had burnout it was just like I went from doing like vegan for 30 days to keto for 30 days and all this and like and I've never I, I feel very blessed like I, I was definitely influenced by diet culture just being someone born in the 90s and but I never like diet wasn't a word in our house like my mom never put us on on that we were in no foods or deem not like I feel very lucky and then suddenly I realized I was like in this cycle of like, I've never been on diets and never promoted diet culture, but I'm doing all these diets because they're clickbaity and my body's not. And like, it was just like, I would lose weight and then be bloated. And it was just like this weird cycle. And now I think I can do it a lot more subjectively. And you know, I always take an intuitive approach to it. And I think that's what I even, the only reason I ever still do those videos is I just kind of want to siphon in from all the people being like, oh, I'm doing this and being, following it exactly this way. And this is how they do it and it's right or wrong. And I just try, you know, the best example is the Scarlett Johansson video I just did. I did it because I always wanted to train like a Marvel character. I've always loved Marvel. And her diet, I saw it and I was like, I can't do that. Like I can't perform like a Marvel character and train like that and eat that little carbs. Now, of course, yeah, if you're paying me $50 million, maybe I would I'd do anything for that. But at the same time, I was like, I'm not promoting that. So I talked about it and explained, you know what? I will eat whole foods this month, but um, I went out drinking with my friends. We had pasta. I'm not going to stop that. And so I just, without commenting on it as like I would as a registered dietitian, because I also know that's not my scope of practice. I'm more just say, this is what works for my body. This is why I'm doing it or not. Or, you know, it's whenever I try a diet, I never reduce my portions or increase them. I'm trying to do a lot more of that. I'm like, this is just how much I need to eat, listen to my body. And for the most part, the ones I do, they, everyone kind of eats the same. If I eat a little different every day, like I'm, I've never been someone that's like, eats the exact same every day. I, being an athlete, I was always on the road. Like my body's very adaptable to be like, this is what you eat, like make do with it. And so if anything, that's just kind of how I naturally eat. And so, that's why I did it, but now just definitely putting the hard boundaries of like, I'm not just gonna do months of, you know, sacrificing myself for it. And that's what I used to do. I was like, I'm sacrificing myself to promote like, cause I'd almost do it to show this doesn't work. And then I was like, you know what, that's, I'm breaking out and it's just not worth it. And I'm not promoting, cause then you look at all my titles and it looks like I'm promoting diet culture when you get click in the video and it's, complete opposite. So I've definitely, that was another reason for the burnout and just being like, I'm not making the content I want to make. Cause like, I, I realized that I was like, every video is a diet video and I have an anti diet culture and it's more about the training for me, but then I do know people like the food and I love food. So it's trying to find that, like, I love food. I love talking about food. I love exploring and trying different things, but at the same time, not just promoting Yo a yo-yo cycle that I've never been a part of and suddenly I was doing that just because SEO optimized keto. Yeah, and I think you do a really great job at that and obviously not a lot of channels do, so I always appreciate that. And I'm like, I'm curious, but the challenges, like when you started the challenges, was there ever an intention there to kind of promote a sense of like food freedom or um, were you kind of more in it for the entertainment value and the SEO at the beginning? Like I, I know you've mentioned that your your kind of goals and your mandates have changed, um, but what was where were you at when you started that? So when I started, it was definitely a fluke. And this is why I was like, everyone wants a viral video until they have a viral video. And I learned this the hard way. So my videos before I had my first viral one were very like, I was just trying different, like I would do Orange Theory Fitness for her, uh, like just for the first time, I tried CrossFit, I do, and that was how I started to get traction. And I used to actually do, I started out vlogging and they did fashion hauls. And then that was where I was like, hey, this is fun. I'm traveling around Canada, showing different workouts. And that's what I thought was my thing. And then just one day on Buzzfeed, I saw the Tom Brady video and someone did it for 24 hours and it had all these views I'm like 24 hours that's nothing I was like I'll do it and I'd been just being transparent partying for like three months I was new to Toronto I was going out I wasn't eating healthy and I was like you know what if there was ever a time to just like because all of it like I wasn't in a diet like I wasn't trying to do that I was like just a lot of nutrient dense foods for a bit let's do it and the video ended up blowing up. And so suddenly I was like, oh, this is what people want. So Buzzfeed's most popular diet videos, start just doing that. And that's definitely where I started doing it, which came funny. I've never really, my weight's kind of fluctuated naturally. Like it always does within five, 10 pounds, but I've never had a big weight loss or weight gain journey. Um, just a little bit uh, here and there. 
And so that was a big realization when I told you pre-COVID where I was like, hey, Kelsey, what are you doing? Like, you're just doing these just because, and I always try to have an intuitive message because if you, um, I wouldn't even label myself like an intuitive eater because I just don't label how I eat. I just listen to my body and I enjoy food and I love nutrient dense food and I love pasta and beer and you know, I just try to enjoy life to its fullest. And yeah, so I might be getting a long way around to get to that answer. But I think that I definitely felt that as well is that it just kind of murked that I never want to promote a diet. If someone really responds well to keto or vegan, I will never demonize them. Like it's all about what works even perfectly for you. Um, and yeah, I think that was just a realization of it just happened. I just kind of got trapped in it. I was like, this is what people wanted more and more and more. And then one day I had to step back and was like, why the hell are you doing this? And so that's definitely, there's the, everyone wants the viral video until you, it's not the perfectly you video. And I've had that recently, even that's been a, some videos that I truly feel are my soul do well. And I'm like, ah, that's the kind of viral video you want. Yeah, I feel you on that. Cause I mean, the exact same thing happened to me. I, my freely review video went viral. Um, and that's what kind of kicked off all the diet review videos that everyone's obsessed with. And I've really over the years, of course, refined my delivery, um, just as I found myself personally and professionally, and also have had to like find my why, like ask myself, what is my, what is my purpose in these videos other than just being sassy and, and, um, and snarky sometimes. Which we love, which we love, never change that. Right, we love we love a good sass factor, um, but I'm I'm always trying to find ways to communicate nutrition information in an entertaining way, and ultimately to take down diet culture because I think on YouTube specifically, but really like all social media, TikTok is the worst. Um, there's just so much misinformation and so much problematic um, kind of diet advice that a lot of young folks, specifically women, um, young women are very vulnerable to following. And I have a lot of very young followers who are trapped in these, this cycle of diet culture. And so um, I think for me, like my why is like, I need to let these people know that this is not the diet that they should be following and here's why. And ultimately to teach people a little bit about how to find their own intuition when it comes to, to food and nutrition. And I think that your videos do a really, really awesome job at that too. Even if you're not explicitly coming out and being like, here's how to eat intuitively. You just are demonstrating it every single day. So I love that. That's always the comments I, I like that like, I've tried to never make it a big deal that I'm eating pizza. I'm like, just eat the pizza. And like, I think that shows, like I think sometimes people are like, it puts so much hype on it and I'm like, no, just savor like the crust and the crunchiness and the butter and the oil. And I just try to savor and like really make it sound, cause that's why I love food. I was like, there's soul in something that's handmade. And like, that's where like food is such art to me. And I've always tried to just present it. And I think that's where I'm never like, you have to eat intuitively. But I'm like, but if you're eating too, like here, come to the good side, come over here. Like there's a lot of fun stuff. And I've always tried to just like show like, enjoying life um and like you said that was definitely my mission like i feel like i had like a second it's not second awakening but i had a second chance at life and i'm like i'm gonna milk this for everything it's worth and i hope unfortunately i think especially coming from sports i saw it a lot is a lot of girls are trapped in diet culture and i see it so much on tiktok and youtube and it's just I just want to demonstrate you can be really healthy, you can be athletic, you can, you know, and enjoy life like that. That's always kind of just like my mission. So even though we present it in different ways, I think that's definitely like we have the same end goal in our content. Like you come from like truly showing the steps and I'm just like, that's kind of where I even like my channel is it shows like, oh, Kelty eats intuitively, she does this. And like, but if someone needs like hard facts they could go to a channel like yours and you would be able to present like no here's how you like literally do it and i think that's a, like a beautiful thing of like this new community that's coming on in youtube and really presenting healthy you know things uh and not just clickbait detox teas yeah a hundred percent and i'm curious is there any fitness challenges or like diets that you regret publicly attempting on your channel yes and no because i've tried to as cliches that says live with no regrets because I think the only reason I'm here and have any knowledge or anything is that I screwed up so much. Like in the last 10 years, it's if I just wrote all my failures, I was like, and that's the only reason I'm where I am today. And 
you know, I have a lot of bigger goals and definitely, you know, uh, where I want to go, but I think the friends, family, boyfriend, career, just my passions, I'm only here because I screwed up a lot. So I try not to have regrets, but that being said, I think if I'd gone back after the Tom Brady video, I would be like, okay, Kelty, I know the diet ones are great, but like what you, cause my rationale back then was like, you're given this opportunity, take it and run. And I was like, you're given this opportunity, take it and run, invent, make the video you want. And then, but that's, you know, easier said than done. It was just me on my own. Like I was living in a city by myself. I had no one doing what I was doing. I was just trying to figure it out. So I tried not to look back at regrets because I'm here talking to you today. And so I'm very thankful for that. But definitely I think I would have right then started making the videos I always wanted to make and not just appeal to the algorithm. Yeah, I feel you on that. Um, and let's talk about your thumbnails for a second because I mean, obviously you have an amazing body and you should rock it, so no judgment. Um, but I'm curious if you feel like your videos would perform as well as they do if you didn't have like a lot of before and after ab shots on your thumbnails. This something I'm even trying to figure out is like, um, and luckily I just hired a videographer and I'm hoping this actually like solves this is like, it's so hard to make a thumbnail on. I just have my little like G seven X and like, just try and take a intriguing thumbnail. And the reality is in the fitness health community, the best thing is like a before and after, cause it is a story. Your thumbnail should tell a story. It should be intriguing it. And so, and everyone's clickbaiting at the end of the day. So you're against people clickbaiting really bad things. And so I've always kind of tried how would I, uh, sometimes I do a challenge and sorry if I'm going to jump one way, but it'll end up at the same. I'll do a challenge and not show my results before and after. And people in the comments are like, well, what, why'd you even do this? You're not showing the results. I'm like, well, it was more entertaining, educational. And then I show it and people are like, oh, you're just clickbaiting. And then, so I've tried to define the balance with it. And I think I really, that's something I want to work on. It's like really intriguing thumbnails that don't just involve your body and before and afters. But then at the same time, a lot of those videos, what I tried to also do is show when I was first starting YouTube, I remember seeing all these body transformations. I'm not taking away from anyone who's had beautiful body transformation and so proud of himself, but I saw a lot that were faking it. A lot that were Photoshop, a lot that were posed differently. And so sometimes I'll purposely do that and then show myself doing it. I know the one I had, I think it was, for a cycle or like a 30 days spin class. And it showed how if I pose differently, I have a thigh gap. And so I've had that in the thumbnail and then I did have my journey, you know, I showed how my legs changed, but then I also showed a lot of times people are just, you know, posing differently for these thumbnails. And I, I see the irony that I'm just posting it different for the thumbnails and I'm still feeding into the same system, but I also think you have to have that I'm just trying to have it more common knowledge. And I think actually TikTok has been good about that. It's like just calling people out. And now people are savvy enough that they're seeing like, oh, that's, that's bull****. Like someone is Photoshopping themselves. Someone is posed differently. And so now I'm kind of like, okay, you guys know that. So we can move past those trendy thumbnails before and after and let's go. And then sometimes I do have a body transformation. I know, you know, I got really back into athletic training after. And so I did have muscle. So I was like, Hey, I'm going to show that there. It is a journey. And, uh, so it's, it's a balance and I'm trying to figure it out, but I hope that in the murkiness of the bad sides of YouTube, if my thumbnail can be more intriguing, at least I know, and not to put myself on a high horse, it's promoting something healthy if someone is in a spiral, because we both know the algorithm feeds off very negativity. Social Dilemma uh, showed that, that like eating disorder algorithm, you just start with a diet and then before you know it, you're down that. And so I've always kind of liked thinking that sometimes someone is on that downward spiral and then they hit my video. And so there's sometimes, I think I'll always play into that just a little occasion, not every video, but just knowing, hey, you know what, someone, the algorithm has started you with weight loss and dieting and suddenly you're down in this really dark place and my thumbnail somehow is in there, but then you're brought right back up to love yourself, love moving your body, enjoy food. Yeah, 100%, and I totally get you. I mean, the, the YouTube world is all about clickbait. Like, just, just, you gotta just understand that, folks. Um, and so I don't think there's anything wrong with having, um, uh, you know, an intriguing thumbnail or an enticing, um, title, but like you said, as long as the content itself is actually helpful and supportive. And it's funny cause I was just, I just did a video. I don't know if you saw Blair Walnut's, um, recent video about how she lost 20 pounds or something in, or whatever it was, 20 pounds in a couple months or whatever. Well, 
In that video, she talked about why she will manipulate her thumbnails to like change her body size and things like that. And her rationale was the same. It was like, I'm hoping that someone will click on my video and they'll be brought to a, a good message. And I was like, yes, that's fair but the, the message has to be good. And so in that case, not so much, but I agree. Like, you know, there is that balance there. And sometimes people are searching for, for example, like detox or cleanse. And if they click on my video that says detox or cleanse, hopefully they'll get like a tutorial on the fact that you just need to like take a shit and you'll be cleansed, you know? So they'll be served that, that, that truth bomb right there. So I, I totally get that. And it's funny, like I remember, one of your videos specifically that it just came up in my feed and i'll be honest i don't watch a lot of youtube other than for work because it just it's like triggering for me um but i remember there was like one video that was like i'm gaining weight or something and in the image you're crying and i was like i never clicked so fast i have to be totally honest i clicked so fucking fast I don't even know why I cared. Like that's, that to me is like, it tells me something about like deep seated um, kind of interest in, in weight gain and weight loss that like, it's very hard to escape. That's diet culture for you. That that's just even something that I talk about, but it's there. And I remember clicking on it and it was actually a quite happy video. I mean, there was like some emotional parts in it too, but it was really about like you trying to gain some weight to feel like your best self. And so, like you said, like, you know, someone's, someone's going to click on that being like, oh my God, she's gaining weight. Like, oh, what's she going to do? And here you are being like, yeah, I'm actually like purposefully trying to feel my best. And that includes get weight gain. And that's okay. That's a good thing. And I love that. I never want someone to click on a video and leave feeling like they got cheated, but I feel like they're like, oh, that was even more than I expected. So that video, yeah, it just came. I had done a challenge right before and I just lost weight and it was not like anything so scary. I was like, I prefer myself. I'm just more athletic, like five pounds heavier. Um, and then in that video, I just opened up, I'm in a long distance relationship and we hadn't seen each other for a year. And I was like, you know, I'm going through a lot of like mental health things and like it was just opening up. And so that's why I was like, I was crying, I was gaining weight, but it's not. And then I just tried to normalize because I think, yeah, someone clicking on that is just very triggered by like, oh my God, gaining weight is the end of the world. And I just want to show like, it's not always a bad thing. And like, you don't have to demonize it. You can be kind of subjective to it. And so exactly, I think that's the forever battle in YouTube. 100%. I totally agree. Um, and so I'm curious, like I've watched a lot of your videos. And like I said before, I think that you seem to have a very strong relationship with food. And it sounds like, you know, based on your history that you do, um, do you ever worry that you may like ostracize a subsect of your audience or unintentionally like water down some of these food freedom messages while appealing to people who are still kind of like drawn in by that aesthetic or fat loss promise? Yeah, and that's where it is tricky and I'm forever navigating that the unfortunate thing is and that's where I think we're starting to change and this is why I'm even just trying to change with my audience is weight loss is the most clickbaity thing. That's why a lot of females get into fitness. That's why a lot of girls start working out and you know, I'm not going to even demonize it because if that just gets you to the gym and then you're suddenly like, oh, that dumbbell is kind of fun. Like, let's try this. And before you know it, someone's doing CrossFit and like that sounds scary and if someone watching this is like, oh, that never be me. Like, it's not a bad thing but I think I am always worried that yes I'm just always navigating weight loss and people are caring for weight loss I'm not talking about weight loss but I, I just think that's just kind of my mission is I think your body is just this beautiful vessel that allows you to do more like for me I've always just the best envision is like I want to be really athletic so when I go on a boat I can jump off and dive into the water and when I go to a music festival I can dance till 3 a.m. and like as much as like overcoming challenges is really good for confidence like that is why I move I love it. And I totally, I am, a, I'm totally on board. I, I, I always say I, I believe in body autonomy. And so I don't think that there's any value in shaming people for wanting to lose weight, even if it's for aesthetic purposes. Like I don't care what's your why. Um, I just want people to believe that and, and to know that if they don't want to lose weight, they don't have to. If they don't want to get a six pack, they don't have to. And they can do what feels best for them. And you know, that's really what diet culture 
is trying to teach us and I want people to know that they have choice, that they have autonomy, that they that they can do what's actually best for them and not just what another Instagrammer is telling them that they have to do. Um, so yeah, I'm all for the breadth of that, that message and, and making sure that ultimately you're doing what kind of feels good to you. And also just like having fun as well. So I love that you're promoting that. Um, okay, I've got one more big question, but a fun one before that, that I'm just gonna slip in here because I figure like we're talking about so much about, um, you know, letting our personality shine and being our, our truest self and, and showing our soul. Real talk, what's your favorite cocktail? Actually, not just cocktail, like any drink. I need to just leave it open for you. Go on about this. I know you could, I, could. I know you could. <laughs> but like, but you can only pick one. My favorite drink is a good extra Nejo tequila, just even just on the rocks. But here's the trick. You get a really good tequila or a mezcal, you chase it with orange and cinnamon on it. And so like, get a really, it, well, like lime's good, but this like, oh, that would be like my go-to. So I've never heard of that before, but it's been a while since I've been to like a cool bar. So, um, but I will keep that in mind for the next time I'm taking shots. All right, so final question, what are you most fed up with in the health and fitness industry? I think just the black and white of it is that like keto's good, vegan's bad, vice versa. It's like everyone's kind of, it's like, even I see it a lot on YouTube, it's like, the eating disorder recovery community versus the bodybuilding community. And yet their goals are gonna be completely different. How they, like one has to start eating more butter and the one, you know, they have very aesthetic goals and it's about discipline and, you know, very regiment. And I think it's just attacking the other when people have completely different goals, completely different bodies. Some girls don't want to weight lift. They've tried it and they're like, you know what? I'm more of a flowy person. I want to do yoga and dance and, be, and that's fine. On the flip side, I was like, have you ever tried weight lifting? That might be really confident building. And you know, someone wants to go to spin class. Is that the most optimal way to grow your, grow your glutes? No, but it's really fun. It feels like a nightclub when you're in it. And I think it's just that not attacking each other so much and just being so against each other. It's more supporting that at the end of the day, all fitness and health is, is just like allowing you to live a longer, better life and enjoying your journey and whatever, as long as everyone's in that direction, they're bettering themselves, whether it be increasing their PR, having a healthier relationship with food, losing a little bit of weight, even just the weight loss, weight gain community. They're the same and they're different and we're on the same journey, but they can be in completely different bodies and completely different methods. And I think we, I've always tried to promote on my channel and I, I really hope, and I see you do this, is that it just more of like, you see someone doing something completely different, than you, but they're not harming anyone and they're doing better for themselves. You, we're like, you clap for that, even if it doesn't resonate with you at all. As long as you see someone doing better about themselves, like listen to their story. And I think if, if we hear each other's stories, we would resonate a lot more with each other and not just paint like, oh, she's a weightlifter. Oh, she's a yogi. Oh, she's I think I was like, are, are you happier? Are you living your more fulfilled life? Yes. And I was like, then you're all on the same journey. And I hopefully the fitness community does that except for some stuff that's like really bad like detoxes and, <laughs> and that I was like and we could just all throw that out the window. Agreed. That we don't even need to entertain as like a well maybe it's like no. No, we're good. Yeah, I totally agree. Well, thank you so much, Kelty. I really appreciate it. I think we've all learned so much. And of course, I'm gonna leave some links below in my description for people to be able to find you. So thank you for joining me. Oh my God, thank you. This was so much fun just having a little chit chat. I really appreciate it. And thank you for everything you do. It's been so refreshing. I know even growing up on YouTube, it was a lot of like, well, I'm not a registered dietitian. I can, it's so nice that like, you're enjoyable to watch, but you're there's finally like a dietitian out there that like, people can actually turn to and know it's not just someone who took one course. Like you genuinely know what you're talking about and you present it in a really fun way. So thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, and guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it the thumbs up. Also leave me a comment below on who you'd like to see me uh, interview next. I'm very excited to continue this series. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.